to Pulse WV Live, a network that beats to the heart of God. And I am your host, John Fowler. So glad to have you tuned in to this day, and I hope your day is going well in Jesus' name. On the phone with me today is uh, the, our director of ministry, Jennifer McAllister in Winston-Salem for the Pulse Church, a church that beats to the heart of God in partnership with the Church of the Living God. Jennifer, what's up? Hi. Hey, you're live in West Virginia and Winston-Salem, too. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, and awesome. Ar- and around the world, you know, no doubt about it. We're real excited. Coming up, let me go ahead and put this on the screen for everybody to see. Coming up uh, next week, actually, it's on April the 4th, 5th, and 6th. That's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And uh, it's going to be a three-day camp meeting, the Pulse Winston, in partnership with the Church of the Living God. It's going to be uh, in, uh, it's called the John 3 Conference Center. This is where we will be having uh, the Pulse Experience every Thursday night uh, starting uh, next week, and we're real excited about that. So on April the 4th and 5th, um, I'll be preaching on the 4th at 7 p.m. Pastor Jay Mace will be preaching on um, at 7 o'clock on the, on the uh, 5th, which is um, coming up. It, 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 wouldn't you know somebody's trying to call me when here we're trying to do a – that means they're not listening and watching, doesn't it? <laughs> I know how that works. So anyway, it'll end here in a second. But uh, So anyway, that's coming up, and that's uh, three days of camp meeting. And you can also come in if you have a camper. You can bring your camper, and uh, there's also dorms to where you can come in. And um, uh, we have, uh, you know, for men and for women and bathrooms, all the facilities. And so it's just a great place for you to come and check out. And we are really excited. Jennifer, we talked about, now I've known your husband uh, for uh, Bobby McAllister and I go way back in radio back when we were like 16, 17, 18 years old. And mm-hmm. so we're in our 50s now, 55. And, and so I've known Bobby for all those years. And then when he married you, you you became part of our family as well. And um, I remember there were times that you and Bobby would come and stay the night at our house. This was even before we even had children. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. so you, you think how many years this has been. And then you add to that, how many years do you think that there's been a conversation? I know the Pulse Church is 10 years old. So within within those those years, there's been a long time that we've talked about a uh, a campus in Winston-Salem. That's right. And so and then your all's ministry uh, with New Salem uh, has been around for many, many years. And uh, so what's amazing is intertwining three ministries to work together, the Pulse Church, New Salem, the Church of the Living God, all working together under one roof. And what an exciting uh, opportunity for all this to take place. So, Jennifer, when when we originally started talking about this, we never did anything with it. We just talked about it. Right. And then um, I remember driving to Gasway one day and I just called you. And hey, what are y'all doing? You know, where and you all were living. Uh, you just moved back to Winston, but where were you living before? Like uh, for the past we, how many we years? Actually, yeah, we were we were actually living um, near Greenville, South Carolina, in um, Greer, and working in Taylor's. Bobby took a job in 2020 at the WGGS Television. It's Christian Broadcasting. Dove Dove Broadcasting is the name of the, the um, network. Um, because in 2020, everything basically, you know, how the world shut down, and but television kept going. So he took a job there. Uh, our daughter was at school there at the um, Logos um, Academy of Arts Christian Conservatory, and so we moved there close to her and to, to get work. And so we were living there, and when you called that day, I was like, hmm, he, you were still interested in, in planning a church in Winston? And I said, well... We're actually not in Winston anymore. And you said, well, how about Spartanburg? And we were very close to Spartanburg. So that conversation started with the um, possibility of, of planning a church in Spartanburg, South Carolina. But um, so that was that was about three years ago, in, right, when you called. And then your, your grandbaby, one of the grandbabies was born. And we 
we didn't return to that conversation for a, a, probably a couple of years, did we? No. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was. It took a long time for us to talk about it again, and because everybody's yeah. life's busy, and Absolutely. and then you know there was that conversation, and Christy and I went to Florida, and we were coming, getting ready to come back, and that's when, and I loved what you I loved what you said. Let's let's put some vision down on paper. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. we started putting vision down on paper with uh, with New Salem, and then we started putting vision down with uh, the Pulse Church and how those two could work together. And your vision, you know, as uh, director of ministry for the Pulse Church, Winston, um, I mean, I'm just really excited about how this is going to work. And so, you know, if, will it be a traditional, a type of traditional church that most people are used to? We we feel that we want to we feel that God wants to move it in a different direction. And maybe you can cover some of the areas that you feel like when you said no, what what makes it to where it's not going to be like a traditional church? Well, one of one of the things is that we're not going to be meeting there on Sundays. We're meeting on Thursdays. And part of the reason for that is that we want to be an outreach to other churches and across denominations and non-denominations. We want to be able to um, help uh, support local churches and help them to do some things better if they need help. And so, uh, you know, and just to revive, because, you know, a lot of ministers, John, they give out and give out and give out and minister, but where do they go? I mean, I'm sure, you know, you, you listen to Bible studies and different things. You got, you we have sources that we can glean from, but that togetherness you know when you have support and just help in areas of bringing bringing christians together and show that we're not all so different it's not like i've just seen because we go to so many different churches and different types of churches in our ministry and we know and see their hearts are the same to worship the lord and to love love god and we need to come together if any time we ever need to come together the church of god needs to come together the true living church that beats to his heart we need to come together that is that and, is so true and so that's why we wanted to do that is to enable plus I'm, i've known there's this little waitress in um taylor south carolina and she said i want a church to go to but they need they had quit having services on sunday nights and wednesday nights and just having a lot of the churches is having services on sunday morning she said but i have to work all day sunday and i have to work evenings on wednesdays and she didn't have a church you know time when she could come out to church and fellowship so i was thinking what if there was a different day regularly that people like that could could come and worship together so that was one of the thoughts too and in choosing thursdays and being just a little different than your and we want to support we're not saying come here because we're better than other churches we want to support the local community of churches so it's almost like the pulse church winston is becoming a outreach in a lot of ways to be able to yes. to reach out to the people, you know, the the pastors that may be struggling, the 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 people that can't make a Sunday morning but would love to be in a in a actual church service instead of watching it online. Uh, but then yes. on top of that, you know, have you know where there's a move of God, where there's praying for the sick, where there's you're seeing the gifts and, and the gifts in operation and the fivefold ministry yes. in place. Uh, yeah. to, to be able to see to see God uh, do great things. Now, let's go back to your past. You've been singing since knee-high to a grasshopper, I guess. Yes, sir. And you've been Not singing, and you've, and you've written many, many songs, uh, and the Lord yeah. has just done really big things. So what, you know, so this is a part, this is a part of, of ministry uh, that's that's going to be, um, different from anything you've ever done in in the past, but yes. you're, but you're adding to what you already know and what God has already done with you. And so, what what parts of this are you excited about uh, with a brand new launch of the Pulse Church uh, of the Living God I in Winston? Yeah, I'm excited about all of it, John. But I, you know, when you talk about the music, I think that was our first conversation, John, about. Um, you know, planning a new church, you'd, you'd ask, do you think there's something, a need for this in Winston area? And I said, you know, 
music is a big deal with churches. I mean, it is a divide in our, I mean, it may be the elephant in the room that no one's talking about, or maybe there, maybe everyone's talking about it. I don't know, but I know that music is causing division in the church among us because of uh, traditional hymns versus like Southern gospel music versus contemporary praise and worship music. And so this is what I've been studying. I have been studying the word worship. And also when it says like every scripture about songs and hymns and spiritual songs and what, what the purpose of music in the church is. And it, we should be coming together on this issue, not being uh, divided. And there is room for all of the types of music as long as they're honoring God and not glorifying the flesh, but we're glorifying Jesus Christ. And I see that in hymns and in the Psalms and spiritual songs in praise and worship. Um, but it's the spirit of the thing. And so we want to, that's one of the things we want to do is worship workshops. And it may, if someone comes to it thinking it's just about contemporary praise and worship music and how to do that, that's not because the word worship, actually, John, is such a rich word in Hebrew. Um, it is actually the same word for work. And it's like, the it's literally like, let all that we do be done to the glory of God. It's all that we do being in, in a spirit of praise and worship toward our Lord. And so, anyway, so that was the first conversation. Is there a place for where there's no judgment about the music and that we don't divide over the style of music we use and we can have both? Right. Or, it, it, the, we, we glean and follow the Holy Spirit in leading us and which song to use, and we're not going to judge it based on it's in this genre or that genre. And you use those, you use the various types on your network too. I've noticed that. You use Southern Gospel and contemporary and probably then there are hymns included in that so um you are there you're on the same page as far as music goes of what what we should have in the church and and how we you know attitude we should have toward it and i said yes there's a place for that because some people are starving for you know to hear an old hymn right. <laughs> they yeah. want, that's where their soul goes you know they that's their language they they grew up with where could I go but to the Lord or um, Amazing Grace or, you know, these, these old hymns that just make their hearts rejoice. But there's room for the new, too. So yep. that was one of the conversations we had. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the music. Of course, that's my, you know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's your wheelhouse. Yeah, that's uh, my. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. And coming up, uh, and coming up on Friday, April the fifth, around two two fifteen in the afternoon, there's going to be a worship workshop uh, with Bobby uh, and Jennifer and Cabe uh, McAllister, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, it's called the Heart of Worship. Now, tell us, uh, tell tell everybody a little bit about what that's going to look like. Okay, well, we're going to talk about what is worship, and um, there are two. I just started praying about Lord, you know, help us lead us into um, what we're going to share and show us where to start. And and He just brought to our hearts Old Testament, New Testament. Look at worship in the Old Testament and New Testament. And gave us two examples of David and John. And when I told my son-in-law this, he brought up something very interesting. I was like, this is amazing because I didn't even think of this when the Lord brought that to my heart. But um, David, the name David means beloved of God, beloved of God. And John is considered the beloved disciple, the beloved disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. Well, you know, we know he loved all of them, but John called himself that, the disciple who Jesus loved. Right. And sometimes all the will say, yeah, I'm that, I'm that girl that Jesus loves. <laughs> That's so funny. That's <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So anyway, we're starting there with... Yeah, that David was a man after God's own heart. What does that mean? That we're pursuing God's heart. And when I thought about the pulse and the, you know, the church that beats to the heart of God, you know, I thought of John and how he put his head on Jesus' chest. And it, and it just came as he was listening for God's heartbeat. 
He wanted to know him. Wow. He wanted to know Christ. He want, He believed and knew that he was God. And God's heart was beating in him. And I'm just like, we as Christians, God's heart should be beating in us. He, he is. If we're born again, we have his heart beating in us. That's so good. We should be listening for that Holy Spirit. He's the heart of it. And we should be listening for him and, and pursuing to know him. And that is what worship means, is pursuing to know God like David did, like John did. There are examples that the Lord led me to about Old Testament, New Testament. And they, that heart of worship is wanting to know God. And when you do, you see his beauty and you want to glorify him. You want to show, share it with everyone you know how good God is. So worship is deeper than lifting your hands. Absolutely. But there actually is a word in, in the Bible that they translate worship that the word actually means lifting your hands. So there wow. is a word they translate to worship that means lifting your hands. And I thought that was wonderful when I found that. And this is like just in the past few weeks we were studying this and studying the words and meanings of them. So the one word, and I'll go into depth in this with the worship workshop. Of, I don't want to even try to pronounce them here, but um, the one word means work. It's literally everything you do, do it unto God. But the other one with lifting your hands, there is that in worship that you lift your hands. Um, so I I struggled with that for a while, John, because truthfully, we went to churches. We I, I grew up in a basically Pentecostal church, the Church of the Living God. They are full gospel church. But I went to a Baptist school, and I love my Baptist friends. I love the school. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, education through the Baptist Christian school I went to. But one side says, you know, be still, don't raise your hands, don't show any emotion. And the other is very emotional and raise your hands. And you felt from both, if you did one thing or the other, you would be judged. Right. So I struggle with which is correct. Do I raise my hands when I feel the Holy Spirit? You know, when I feel joyful about the Lord, do I raise my hands? Do I raise my hands when other people are raising their hands or when they are not? And there was a struggle within because if I lifted my hands in a church where they were lifting their hands and the, the enemy comes in and says, you're just doing this for a show just to please men. And then if you don't do it in the church where they don't do it, where they don't raise their hands, then the enemy comes and says, see, you're ashamed. You're ashamed to lift your hands. And I just got so sick of that argument within me. And finally, I was praying about it. I said, Lord, how is it? And finally, this thought came to me. Jesus raised his hands for me. I can raise my hands for him. Wow. So that was even before I knew there was a word that meant raising your hands before the Lord as the word worship. Translated in English as worship is lifting your hands in the congregation. So I'm going to lift my hands when, you know, I can worship the Lord. I can lift my hands for him. <laughs> that is so awesome. Well, I mean, it, it's a great analogy. I mean, it's amazing how it just flows into to our next conversation of something that you you don't see very often, or I don't think I've seen it at all. Yeah, you know, you see dramas within church and you see, you know, little plays, you know, around Easter time, you know, the kids will come out and do do different things. But but your your team in Winston-Salem has m more advanced training in the drama, in in the the plays aspect. And how does all that play into church? How does it all fit? Yeah, um, well, there's going to be a workshop about that on the Saturday. And um, I think the title is going to be, you know, sharing Christ through storytelling. And Jesus used stories. And there, is, there are examples in the Bible of actually where God had people enact things. They acted out so that, because that stays with us. You know, when we see something, a visual, it will sometimes speak to our hearts. My daughter was, um, she was compelled to ask me to pray with her for salvation 
because that day when she was uh, eight years old and they were teaching them in a keeper's class, she was in sign language for John 316. And when she saw the sign, you know, that action of doing it and, and seeing that something clicked within her that I need a savior. I need to know Jesus. And she, you know, she prayed that night and was born again. Amen. Um, so it can be powerful, which that's not acting, but that's just saying that visuals and stories, God used stories. So we can, we need to use every tool available to reach this world for Jesus, every tool and by the Holy Spirit, you know, with, with his leadership. So this, this school, my, my daughter met her husband at um, a low cost theater in Taylor, South Carolina. If you haven't been there. I'm going to give a plug for them. Go see a play at the Logos Theater. Currently, they have been, their team has been at the Bible Museum in Washington, D.C. on the world stage performing Prince Caspian, the C.S. Lewis story. And they have exclusive rights to do plays with, um, with some, of his, some of his stories. And they just do a phenomenal job. They are so incredible. And through that play, you know, through those stories, you see um, Christ and you see, you know, lessons and the word of God in there. And it comes to life and people are moved. It touches you and, you know, just touches you in your spirit. So we want to equip and help bring some of that to the Winston-Salem area and equip churches in the area or wherever you're from to come and learn how to better use drama or um, theater to reach people for Christ because that can be a very and what happens is they have um, they have drama camps at the Logos Theater where young people come in as well you know elementary and then they'll have a high school one um, and uh, many many I mean almost every camp multiple young people give their hearts to the Lord who are in the play so wow. as they're learning about how to act this part and how, you know, the story of the play, as they're learning this, their hearts are stirred to know Christ. And um, so maybe some of them who come weren't, weren't born again when they came, and then they leave there knowing Christ and living for him. So um, it's an effective tool, even to the people who are participating as well as the audiences. So um, we want to bring some of that to the triad or the Winston-Salem area. So do you do you uh, see like certain plays that go three days or I mean, certain things that that, you know, camps that will go a week and then a presentation at the end of the week? Is that the way you kind of yeah. see? And, and yeah, that's, that's helping right. train. Yes. They, what they do is um, they will register. Participants will register and then they will audition. So parts will be sent out. And they will choose what they want to audition for. And then they can send, they can, it may be where they could come in person if they're local or they can send a video audition. And then they get their role and they get their script sent to them through the email and they study and learn their parts. And then when they come together for that week, they should already know their lines. But then it's about learning, you know, background, um, how to put it all together on stage, they, how they stand, how they interact with one another, learning the skills of acting. And then on the last night, which is usually a Friday night, um, we have the performance and they have, they have a play and parents, grandparents, family of all, you know, can come and, and enjoy seeing them. What they can accomplish in one week is amazing. That is so, so awesome. I can't wait to see that. We would have all of the, you know, we would put together all of, the wardrobe, you know, the um, costumes and everything. So, so they get to do it full scale uh, play and perform it in one week. And they also leave with new friends and relationships that will last. I mean, I've seen with my daughter, it was uh, several, quite a few years ago that she made some lifelong friends. I mean, you know, they keep in touch. That's and amazing. These are, great way for young people to meet other christian young people too <laughs> so, that's true and that's yeah. how that's how christopher and ali met wasn't it that is how they met it's a very interesting story they are going to be leading this uh workshop that's about christian drama 
um, in theater. Uh, but when they met, Allison had, this is an amazing testimony too. I did not know this, but she had written in a journal when she was 16 years old, a prayer request to the Lord. She had written, I want to be in a play by the time I'm 19 years old. Well, there didn't seem to be any possibility for that for us because we always missed our even home church plays because we were traveling every week and singing together um, in our ministry. And she was homeschooled, and the homeschool co-op we were with was too small to perform, you know, put on a full play. So this was a large request to give to give the Lord. I want to be in a play. Uh, she was interested. I didn't realize. She told me later she was interested in Christian acting. And when she finally told me, I said, I don't know how because, you know, I don't know how that works with, with a Christian life. You know, I was thinking Hollywood. But she said, well, I'm going to do Christian. So... We learned about this theater, and the Lord put this in our path before she turned 19. It was the year she would be turning 19. And the play was Jane, the nine-day queen. And she auditioned, and she got the leading role, John. She'd never been in a play. Wow. She had never acted. And my daughter, if you knew her, she, like, most people think she was didn't talk at all because she's so quiet, so reserved. I had no idea that she has this British accent that she can do that was um, like authentic. I mean, it's amazing. That's crazy. She auditioned for this with this accent that I didn't know she could do, and she got the leading role. And Christopher got the role of her husband in the play. And so wow. when Allie and he met at the camp, and she you know, he introduced himself to her, and she was look. She looked down at the cast list, and she looked at him, and she heard his name. And she said, "So I guess you're my husband." Those were her first words to him. Really? So I, <laughs> That's so crazy. And laughed and, yeah, and so they did this play, and it was it was incredible. It's an incredible. Um, it's a true story in history, and um, it's incredible. Um, I think you can find this if you go to the Logos Theater dot org. Maybe or anyway, if you go there to the Logos Theater online, you can choose different plays that they have available to down to you know, we call it live stream. Live stream. How do you spell Logos is, for for the viewers and listeners? L O G O S. Yeah, it's, it's a Greek word. It's L O G O S, and it means the Word of God. Word of God. So, mm -hmm. that's so and awesome. So, yeah, L O G O S. So they you met. Go there, and you could see you could see Allie and Jane, the Nine Day Queen, because it's on it's on there. I think it costs something to you know to view it, but um, I'm not sure how much that is. But anyway, she That's that was an awesome experience for her. She her prayer request was was granted. The Lord gave her, and not only that, but she met her husband in that play as playing her husband. They were both martyred. They were <laughs> they both died during the play. Oh, wow. Um, they were executed. <laughs> this was in history. It's true. Um, and so because they would not recant their faith. Wow. And so, um, That's yeah, crazy. She was only got to be queen for nine days. So but, it was a, um, so, but the, the, they like rehearsed all week but then did the play? Yes. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So what is the, yeah. so what is the, you know, if people would ask, you know, kind of what, the dynamics of the Pulse Church, uh, Winston, uh, Church of the Living God, looks like. You know, what is the worship? What do you feel like the worship's going to going to look like? Uh, like, what kind of music will people hear? Um, what 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 could people expect? It's going to be a blend um, because I'll say this: we had the experience several years ago, probably about eight years ago, of. Um, leading worship in an, in a new church plant in Greensboro and <clears throat> we basically did all praise and worship the contemporary style music that um, the pastor there wanted us to do and so it was all new to us because we've been singing uh, bluegrass gospel and southern gospel for over 30 years together <laughs> and Long time. so it, you know, that's very different from the, you know, the new modern um, praise and worship music. 
so we would we would sing those songs and I didn't realize we were changing anything we would just sing them and then we had some young people come up a family came up and said how do you take these praise and worship songs and make them southern gospel and I said I didn't know we were doing that I was <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> the way they do but it's just you know my accent and when you've done this music and the instrumentation so I play mandolin, so that will be included in the music. Um, but I'll, and we'll probably, you know, at some point we will add drums. At the beginning, it's going to start simple with what we have, which is um, piano, guitar, and you, John, play piano, so you'll be included in the worship team at, along the way too. But um, and the double bass. So we do some like classical style. We do southern gospel and old hymns and Celtic sounds and the modern, you know, some of the praise and worship contemporary style music. So one of the songs we'll be including uh, just off the top of my head to say one of the songs is um, The Goodness of God. I just think that's a beautiful it is. new song that is going to be a classic because it's just it's just so beautiful. And then Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, the, the Chris Tomlin version of Amazing Grace, um, which is the old hymn. And those, those are some examples, those type songs. And then, you know, some that everyone knows traditionally, um, maybe How Great Thou Art, something like that. But but we're going to do, and that Isaac have written one, John, if you haven't played this one, find it and play it on your, I love this song. It's A Lord of My Heart by the Isaacs. They wrote it. But it sounds like, to me, it's like, it's just right there where I love music to be because it's a blend of the bluegrass and the praise and worship contemporary. It's, wow. it's beautiful. Lord of my heart. I remember the first and, time that I started playing praise and worship after playing Southern gospel for all those years. It was, mm-hmm. a, it was, a, it was different. It's like, yeah. I, can't, I can't do this. It's like, I can't do it. And then eventually <laughs> you just learn it and, you know, and it just, it's second nature. But yeah, there's, uh, well, you know, worship is so important. And so, you know, when we get into this, um, this next week, you know, of course, if you're listening to this, you know, five years from now, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, by God's grace, the Pulse Church of the Living God will be farther along than, you know, where we haven't even started yet, just getting ready to. But, mm-hmm. you know, we just want to inform people, you know, this uh, that the workshop and uh, the drama workshop, uh, you know, sharing the truth uh, through uh, storytelling and then the heart of worship are just some things that are just going to help and just help other churches and help help our church you know because yep. it's uh, so do you th- do you think that there is when when you think about the church today do you think god is pleased with how the church is do you think there's there's too much modernism do you think there's too much hollywood do you i mean what do you think that god would think of the of the church and and that of something that the Pulse Church of the Living God, we don't want to become. Right, right. Well, I definitely believe that um, there's been a little too much emphasis on, I'm going to try not to be judgmental here, but a little too much emphasis on setting a mood. I've heard that a lot. Right. And there's, it's, we can't completely avoid that, you know. It's like I said, I say this. We all have pride. We're going to deal with that the rest of our life. It's the I, you know, in the middle of pride. And that, and we're going to especially deal with that in the in the realm of uh, whoever's on stage. Who's ever, I mean, see, I'm saying stage as, instead of platform or in the front of the church. This isn't a show. This is us coming together to worship. And some of the the moments in my life that I felt like as in, in church, the purest worship came from this, this gentleman that was in a small church that we attended when I was a little girl, he couldn't read or write. And he was partially paralyzed with, with his arms and walked with a limp and he would walk to church. And he, he, like I said, he couldn't read music. He couldn't read words at that point said he sang reach out and touch the lord 
And I mean, without any music, I mean, without any accompaniments, piano or guitar, anything like that, he just walked up to the front of the church and sang, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. And I remember that to this day. I was probably 10 years old, but that was pure. It came from his heart. We need a place for that in church. We need place, you know, leave room for that because it's not about a show. It's not about the theatrical, even though there is room for theater, there's room for giving your best and excellence and all of this in music. Um, and I'm not judging whatever, the, the light, the lighting, whatever it is, the smog and fog and all that stuff. I'm not judging against it. I'm just saying we need to be real. And when we when we worship the Lord, it needs to come from our hearts like it did with this um, his name was Frank, and um, he was given, his heart was toward the Lord, and he was worshiping in a pure form, you know, and it didn't matter what people thought about him. When he would sing, see, his, he was paralyzed in such a way that when one arm moved, the other arm moved, so his, when he would sing, he kept time with those arms, and they would both kind of swing in the same direction. Oh, wow. And... He just, I mean, that's the example. And I've, I've heard that with other in other times, too, like a child who sings maybe off pitch and doesn't say the words correctly, but their heart is pure toward God to, you know, worship the Lord. Um, that's when we, we all receive, but God receives that. And I want God to receive my worship as true and pure, not as seeking something for myself not as seeking man's approval right. and applause. I want it to be to God and between us and then other people to want to join in because they see how good he is, not how good I am. But we do want to strive for excellence. There's a place for that because, you know, they they sent the musicians out in, ahead of the, ba the battle in the Old Testament and they rehearsed. So there's a place for that too, but. We Absolutely. just want it to be real, Don. That's that's what I'm saying. Whatever it is, make it real. Right. Be true. That's so awesome. I think we've we've covered it. Anything else you want to add? That I forgot. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just that we just want people to feel at home with the Lord and see His goodness, and that we want people to feel welcome to have prayer to receive healing in their body or in their spirit um, that's something that I've been missing seeing missing in a lot of churches is that people actually getting the help they need from the Lord and now, from other Christians now we what? need to be about care, that, that compassion and care that we would reach out and do as the Lord commanded us to do heal the sick, heal the sick yes. cast out demons I mean, Amen. I'm saying it because, you know, a lot of my Christian friends will think I'm crazy, but I am not. It's what the Word of God says. It's don't don't ignore it. That was his command. And if he said to do it, we can do it by his power. Amen. That's so true. What, one of the conversations that you and I have had uh, is something that you only see – uh, just certain times of the, of the year, and that's communion. Yes. And and one of the things that the, the Pulse Church of the Living God uh, in Winston-Salem, and we're also implementing it uh, into Gassaway, and I, I'm, I think I believe Pastor Jay wants to do it as well in in, uh, in Winfield, is that every Sunday we have communion, or every every service we have communion. So for mm -hmm. Winston, it'll be it'll be uh, on Thursday. And so, and that was one of the things that you really believe that the Lord, it really worked with you about is having, having communion. Can you, can you share a little bit about why it's important for us to do that every, every Thursday? Yes, um, absolutely. Um, there's a song that we sing. Uh, it's actually one my mom wrote called, um, There's Someone Knocking. And when she wrote the song, um, you know, we often think of the, the back picture where Jesus is knocking at the door, and it's 
on the sinner's heart, you know, someone who doesn't know, an unbeliever, and Jesus is knocking to come in. But but this song was written from the perspective of it's us, the church. He's knocking at our door and he's saying, get your eyes off yourself and your ways and your things, your problems, your faults, your failures, your sin, whatever. Get your eyes off of that. Open the door and let me come in and dine with you. Be refreshed. And I had a dream um, somehow connected with the song. Um, I had a dream where I saw Jesus come into the door and he had a loaf of bread and a bottle of wine coming to the door. Now, I'm not promoting drinking alcohol, guys, so don't think that when I say this. This was my dream. This is He is the wine and he is the bread. He's the new wine. He's Holy Spirit's the new wine. And he wants to dine with the church. He wants us to get our eyes off like we were talking about before. It's not a show. It's not about us. It's not about how perfectly we do things or even how we want to live right. We want to live a good you know, life before the Lord and be holy. But you know how we can do that? By time with Jesus, spending time, keeping our eyes on him and spending time dedicated to him and feasting from his word and feasting from his presence so when we come together his presence is there and we want to come in and say lord i'm taking my eyes off me and my problems and i i'm going to worship you and i'm going to let you heal me see his communion is about healing his body was broken when he was beaten with stripes his body was broken for us for our healing and then when he poured out his blood, that's the wine that was poured out for our salvation, for our souls, our spirits, and forgiveness of sins. So we need to be reminded. Does God need to be reminded? No, but we need to be reminded as often as we can come together that it's not about us, it's about him. And when we partake unworthily, that would be saying, I'm unworthy. No, I'm worthy because Jesus made me worthy. And we're putting it all, say, Lord, I haven't done everything perfectly this week. I do have sin that I still struggle with sometimes in my heart and mind. I've thought thoughts I shouldn't think. I've done things I shouldn't do, but it's not about me. It's about him. He nailed all of that to the cross. He took all of my sin, all of my shame, all of my guilt upon him. And every day, even as I, I think about this, as we say a quick grace over every meal, I try to think about, what, Lord, what you've given me it's all about him yes it's not about me and as we look at him and his perfection and how he took and became sin for us nailed our sin to the cross and buried it then he rose to live in victory and we can live in him in victory we the more we look at that the more we look at him and glorify him and magnify him the better we will live free of sin the better we do that when we're looking at him and not at ourselves. The more we focus on our sin and our shortcomings or whatever it is, our problems, the harder it gets. Right. But when we focus on him and his perfection, what he's done for us. So I, and, and, okay, so I had that dream. And for some reason, the Lord just keeps bringing back to me that, that communion is a big deal. We need to be having communion more often. Um, in our worship together and we need to be focusing on him we come there and we say lord I, i'm laying it all down again i'm you know here i am and um i know that that you your body was broken for my healing Amen. receive healing in your body and that your blood was filled you poured out all of it for me for my forgiveness so we remind us of we're righteous in the beloved he is the beloved son of god and we're righteous in him not outside of him, not in myself. I can't do it. I yes. need him. Amen. That's so good. I'm excited about what God's going to do uh, in the triad and, and Winston-Salem. I'm ex so excited about uh, mm -hmm. about how it's working and, and how God put this team together, you know, to be able to do it. You know, your family moving back, you know, from, from down in, where did you say you were? What town? We were in we were in Greer, South Greer, Carolina. Greer, South Carolina, back to Winston Salem to to do this ministry, and well, I'm just I'm just very grateful 
and for what God's going to do. And I know it's going to be, a, um, we're going to be able to push back the spirit of darkness and advance the kingdom of God. And that's what the whole thing is about. So Absolutely. we, we want to encourage you to be a part of this. I'll put it on the screen again. Coming up next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the, the Pulse Winston, a church, uh, the Pulse Church of the Living God, three-day camp meeting, uh, April 4th, 5th, and 6th. And uh, we want you to be a part of it. And uh, you can check out the website, check out the, the Pulse uh, Facebook pages. Uh, you can check out, uh, you know, on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcast. You could download our radio station app uh, in your store and be able to catch what's going on. Jennifer, I've got there's someone knocking, queued up, ready to play. Oh wow! I think Thank that'd be a, I think that'd be a cool song to 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 end on, don't you? Absolutely. Thank you. Oh no doubt. Yeah. Let's let's play this song, and you all have a great day. And thanks for listening and watching the Pulse WV Live, a network that beats to the heart of God. Do me a favor, share, like, and subscribe, and let people know that we're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm.